Hello everyone, welcome to Kang's All in One TV. So welcome back to our channel. Our lesson for today will be all about the process of the, doing philosophy. That would be the first lesson in our subject, Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person. How are you today guys i hope you are doing well so our lesson for this video will be our first topic entitled the process of doing philosophy in our subject introduction to the philosophy of the human person okay so let's get started now to start with let's start with a pretest but before that let's have an introduction first before the pretest so you will have what you need to know now, philosophy has opened doors for debaters or for debates over many concerns such as the purpose of life, the existence of good and evil, and the way to the truth. Even as a young student, you have already been introduced to philosophy as a discipline. As you proceed to higher levels of your study, you will encounter more philosophical issues that are more advanced and complicated to resolve. And learning philosophy requires learning to look into all available perspectives and work on the relationship to come up with sound, logical, and valid conclusions. Now, in this lesson, you will be able to learn how to distinguish holistic perspective from partial point of view, which helps you to develop your skill of broadly looking at the situation first before concluding anything. Okay. Furthermore, it can be applied in day-to-day -day activities and life's perspectives because it involves an evaluative process that allows a person to make better decisions and act accordingly to situations with the help of various philosophical skills. You will also learn the importance of using philosophical reflection, which enables thought to be looked into using deeper, holistic perspective and in effect actions are directed i mean actions are directed towards greater sources of wisdom and truth okay so let's have a pretest now okay so you will be answering this in your activity notebook so i'll read the direction read each item carefully and use your notebook to write your answer since i'm requiring you to have your activity notebook so you will be using your activity notebook all throughout the task that i'll be giving you in lesson one okay number one it requires a person to be willing to examine one's thoughts feelings and actions and learn more about one's life and experiences is it letter A, reflection, B, judgment, C, holistic thinking, D, partial thinking? Okay, number two. It is a perspective that focuses on specific aspects of a situation. Is it letter A, doing philosophy, B, holistic thinking, C, partial thinking, and D, conclusion? Okay, let's proceed to number three. A perspective that considers large-scale patterns in a system. Is it A, doing philosophy, B, holistic thinking, C, partial thinking, D, conclusion. Okay, let's move on to number four. What is the process of engaging oneself in matters of utility and methodologies to clear out any practical problem or abstract idea? Is it letter A? doing philosophy, B, holistic thinking, C, partial thinking, and D, conclusion. Okay, let's have number five. It is often described as looking at the big picture when describing and analyzing a situation or problem. Is it A, holistic thinking, B, partial thinking, C, reflection, D, wisdom. Okay. And now let's proceed to number six. 
For number six, we have it allows a person to look back on previous experiences and evaluate the meaning or significance of his or her life. Is it letter A, conscience, B, philosophical reflection, C, holistic view, D, philosophy. Okay, number seven. Which of the following situations demonstrates pedantry? Letter A, answering letter J, when asked, what is the capital of Japan? B, making a, re making a review of literature on the phenomenon of bullying in the Philippines. C, reading about the history of one agricultural company. And letter D, debating with a friend about the health impacts of sleeping late. Okay, let's proceed to number eight. Okay, number eight. Based from the two statements below, which of these statements is true? Number one, both partial and holistic points of review are good contributors to doing philosophy. Number two, reflection is not required in doing philosophy. We have there the choices. A, both statements one and two are false. B. Statement 1 is false. Statement 2 is true. C. Statement 1 is true. Statement 2 is false. D. Both statements 1 and 2 are true. Number 9. Who among the following students may have already developed a broader philosophical perspective? A. Mara who regularly monitors the emotional well-being of her classmates. B. Julie, who always listens to all sides of the arguments before giving any advice. C. Christia, who consistently chats with her classmates about their interests and beliefs. D. Trish, who rarely talks with her classmates but is always observant of them. Number 10. Which of the following scenarios demonstrates a partial point of view? Letter A. Referring to only one source of information for your position paper. B. Participating in a class discussion. C. Listening to both your teachers' and parents' advices on how to improve your grades. And letter D. Watching videos over the internet. Okay, so you will write your answer on in your activity notebook so that it serves as your pretest. Okay, now let's start the discussion. So, we have here what's in. Okay. So, this video lesson will enable you to learn more about philosophy and how we are engaged in reflecting on our situations. I mean reflecting on our actions, which we perform in our day-to-day -day lives. So in this lesson, you will be able to gain more knowledge on the differences between holistic and partial thinking and how we are using these two views in our day-to-day -day actions. Moreover, um, you will also gain a deeper understanding of how these views highly affect the decisions that we constantly make in our daily lives. Okay. Now, at this point, you will have an activity. This activity is called Wordscapes Activity. I think you are familiar with this one. Okay. We have here the direction of the Wordscape Activity. So... All you have to do is unscramble the set of words below based on the definition provided in each number. Write your answers in your activity notebook. So number one, as you can see, um, there are scrambled letters in each item. All you have to do is just rearrange the letters and form a word that, that has been defined. Okay, or has been described. Number one, blank comes from the Latin verb sire, which means to know, possessing a certain kind of knowledge. 
Number two, blank is the signs of beings in their ult ultimate reasons, causes, and principles acquired by the aid of human reason alone. Number three, blank is an application of knowledge. Number four, blank is a sufficient ground or explanation of something. Okay, so it's just very easy for you because some of the words are very obvious. Okay. Now, at this time, we will gonna read a story. Okay. We're going to read a story entitled The Blind Man and Elephant. This story is written by an American poet, John Godfrey Sachs, and answer the questions below. Or later on, we will have the guide questions. So listen carefully. I'm gonna read a story. The Blind Man and the Elephant Once upon a time, there were six blind men. They lived in a town in India. They thought they were very clever. One day, an elephant came to their town. The blind man did not know what an elephant looked like, but they could smell it and they could hear it. What is this animal like? they said. Each man touched a different part of the elephant. The first man touched the elephant's body. It felt hard, big, and wide. An elephant is like a wall, he said. The second man touched one of the elephant's tusks. It felt smooth, hard, and sharp. An elephant is like a spear, he said. The third man touched the elephant's trunk. It felt long, thin, and wiggly. An elephant is like a snake, he said. The fourth man touched one of the legs. It felt thick, rough, hard, and round. An elephant is like a tree, he said. Okay, so we have here. The fifth man touched one of the elephant's ears. It felt thin and it moved. An elephant is like a fan, he said. The sixth man touched the elephant's tail. It felt long, thin, and strong. An elephant is like a rope, he said. The man argued, it's, l it's like a wall. No, it isn't. It's like a spear. No, it isn't. It's like a snake. They do not agree. The king had been watching and listening to the man. You are not been You are not very clever. You only touched part of the elephant. You did not feel the whole animal. An elephant is not like a wall or a spear or a snake or a tree or a fan or a rope. The man left the town still arguing. A little girl heard them and said, Each of you is right, but you are all wrong. But I know what you're talking about. Okay, so that's the end of the story. Now let us proceed to the guide questions. So you will be answering the series of questions in your activity notebook. Okay, number one. What happens in the story when each blind man sees the elephant? Why were the six different ideas about the elephant? Were any of the men right about the elephant? Were any of them completely wrong? Number two, what did the blind man learn from the king? What does the storyteller want us to learn from the tale? Number three, do problems like this happen in real life? Think of the times when arguments or misunderstandings have occurred because people saw situations from different points of view. Describe what happened. Number four, how does it feel when another person doesn't see something the way you do? How can you address those differences and perceptions? Number five, what if the man in the story were not blind? Would they still have different perceptions about elephants? 
Why or why not? Number six, does the story give you any ideas about how these problems can be solved? What are some steps you can take to understand why another person doesn't see things the way you do? Okay, so you are going to answer all these five questions on your activity notebook. Okay. Now, let us discuss what is then philosophy. Okay, what is philosophy? Okay, now, uh, last time I've introduced you the term philosophy. That philosophy is the science that inquires into the ultimate cause and principle of all things using the human reason alone. And there was a contemporary philosopher by the name of Carl Jasper. He said that philosophy is a discipline in which questions are more important than answers and in which answers pave the way for other questions. Now, in this context, let us define philosophy. So, uh, etymologically, philosophy is coined from the Greek word philin, which means love, and sophia, which means to love. It is mainly defined as a science of beings and their ultimate reasons, causes, and principles acquired by the aid of human reason alone. During your junior high school years, you may have encountered this word quite a few times. And without you even knowing it, you may have also applied it in your day-to-day -day lives unknowingly. Okay, now we will proceed on the, there are two kinds of thinking and philosophy. So we will be discussing about the holistic and partial thinking. Okay. So, in general, there are two types of thinking that is used in philosophy. We have this holistic and partial thinking. Now, what do you mean by holistic thinking? Now, holistic thinking refers to a perspective that considers large-scale patterns in systems. So, this is often described as looking at the big picture when describing and analyzing a situation or problem. A holistic perspective requires an individual to have an open mindset and an ability to get the general sense or impression regarding a situation. A holistic view also means that one does not confine one's understanding of the world to one's own perspective, but also includes the perspective of others. Now, the view also enables a person to better appreciate his or her experiences as a vital components that give meaning to life. Okay, that is very self-explanatory. Okay, the definition of holistic thinking. Now, what about partial thinking? So, what do we, what do we mean by partial thinking? Okay, so we have here partial thinking, on the other hand, focuses on specific aspects of a situation. The partial view is an important component of analytical thinking. As an individual focuses on certain areas or aspects of a problem in order to understand it. Though partial thinking is useful, philosophy utilizes holistic thinking in making sense of problems and issues related to the human experience. Okay, so you can now distinguish between partial thinking and uh, from holistic thinking. Now let us proceed to the term reflection. Now what do you mean by reflection? Okay, so this is a very common word. And you are familiar with this word, reflection. Now, reflection requires a person to be willing to examine one's thoughts, feelings, and actions, and to learn more about one's life and experiences. One can reflect on almost any subject. For instance, the moment you wake up, you can easily reflect upon the things that you plan to do for the day. And this will enable you to set your daily goals and set you on the path of thinking of ways to achieve them. 
Seemingly, simple or mundane actions take a whole new meaning when one engages in reflection. For example, when buying clothes, for instance. Think of the questions that you ask yourself as you consider buying the t-shirt or blouse you are holding. Okay? Let me start with the simple questions like, will this fit me? Or do I look good in this color? These are usual questions any buyer would ask for himself or herself. Okay. But since we are in a reflective and philosophizing mood, let us now try and think of deeper questions and reflect on the situation. So you may find yourself asking the following questions. Do I even have to buy a new t-shirt today? Am I better off spending my money on other things? Or do I see myself wearing this shirt often? Or am I just going to wear it once? Notice the difference when you engage in reflection. The only simple or the simple task of buying a shirt becomes something much more. So if you concentrate only on simple questions, you would just buy that shirt immediately. But reflection allows you an opportunity to think more deeply about your action. Your motivation for doing such an action. And even its possible consequences. Now reflection also helps us understand ourselves and our actions better. So when we reflect, we can judge whether our actions or decisions are reasonable or not. Now, take time to analyze your decision and actions is one vital skill that you will greatly help you or that will greatly help you as you encounter more challenges in life. Okay, let's proceed. Now, let's start with task number one. So, I hope that everything was clear from the story we have read from the definition of philosophy from uh, the explanation between the partial and the holistic thinking as well as the reflection okay so let's have task one make a creative poster showing a holistic view of your life come up with a creative visualization that will show your life in its totality and how your various experiences contributed to give meaning to your life Okay, so you will just write or show the poster on your in your activity notebook. You will just attach it in your activity notebook. Let's proceed to task number two. So for task number two, discuss with your other family members a particular problem or issue that is important to your family. Now write down your views and use them as basis to come up with a solution based on a holistic perspective. Use the graph as a guide in conducting the discussion. So you are provided with the graph below. You have the, the title problem or issue important to family. So you have to speci be specific. And you have the sample um, boxes in there like you you write there my mother's views my father's views my brother's or sister's views your own view okay and other important views or things to consider but you can modify this graph like if you live with your grandparents you could right there you can include my grandfather's views or my grandmother's views or grandfather's views or let's say your in-laws views okay you can modify the graph according to uh, whom you are living with okay now let's proceed to another activity now based on what you have learned you will be making a journal a reflection journal okay so here's the direction make a reflection journal where you will write your answers to the following questions and write your answers in your activity notebook 
Number one, describe a situation in your life when you were able to engage in philosophy and what circumstances or dilemma brought about your need to philosophize. How did philosophy help you address your situation? Number two, reflect on your life so far. Can you say that you have lived a meaningful life? Considering all your experiences and achievements, what do you consider as the highlights of your life? What things are you looking forward to in the future? You have the criteria. Okay? So we have the criteria, the content is 10 points, the structure and organization is worth 5 points, a total of 15 points. Okay, let us proceed to task number 3. Okay. For task number 3, you are given or you are provided with a table. All you need to do is to complete the table. Still, you will be writing this in your, in your activity notebook. So, it composes of two columns. First column, you have the actions. And the second column is where you write as to what must be done before the action. Okay, number one, buying new clothes. Number two, choosing friends. Number three, eating food. Four, deciding where to study for senior high school. Five, attending classes in the afternoon. Six, going to school. Seven, visiting a friend. Eight, joining an organization in school. Nine, playing computer games. Ten, buying a new gadget. Eleven, asking permission if you would like to go out with friends. Number twelve, helping a stranger. Thirteen, traveling without your family. Fourteen, going to mass or any religious activities. Fifteen, watching movies that are not allowed for your age. Sixteen, posting your opinion or feelings on social media. Seventeen, communic communicating to your siblings about a conflict. Eighteen, giving opinions. Nineteen, going out with the opposite sex. Twenty, confronting a person who verbally hurt you. Okay, so... You have to complete that task and now let's move on to task number four. For task number four, you have to read the following questions below and write your answers again in your activity notebook. Number one, based on your answers in task three, what must be done before making actions? So you'll be answering this in general. Okay, number two. Is it helpful that you do this before making an action? Why or why not? Number three, as a grade 11 student, what have you realized while doing this activity? Reflect and explain your answer. So the same criteria, the content would be five points, structure and organization, five points, a total of 10 points. Okay. So at this point, we will proceed to the assessment or evaluation. So let's have the assessment. Okay. So we have your test one. The direction you have there, write true if the statement is correct and false if it is wrong with a word or words that make it incorrect. Write your answers in your notebook. Number one, a holistic view helps us understand a situation from different vantage points so we can see it more partially. Number two, people tend to apply analytical perspective when looking at problems or situations. Number three, holistic thinking refers to a perspective that considers small scale patterns in the system or in system. Number four, an individual uses a partial point of view when he or she looks at only a limited number 
of the given problem or situation. Number five. A holistic perspective cannot enable a person to step back and consider the general aspect of a certain problem. Now, for test two, you have here, how are you going to show a holistic point of view to a situation wherein two of your closest friends dispute about something? Write your answer in your activity notebook. The criteria would be content is 15 points, the structure and organization is 5 points, and a total of 20 points. Okay. And we will have now the last activity. So we'll have an additional activity that is task number five. Okay. So for task number five, what can you say about the quotation below? Do you agree or disagree with this? Write your answers in your activity notebook. And this is the quotation. Broadening your perspective can be life-enhancing. The criteria, you have the content, 10 points. The structure and organization is 5 points. A total of 15 points. Okay. So, you really have to complete all the tasks. So, I hope that you are enjoying uh, doing the activities given to you in our first lesson. And to end this video, let's have a philosophical quote. Okay, this quote is from a very famous Chinese philosopher, Confucius. And it goes, It doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learned something from this video. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Bye.